five this morning. As I told you, I started this Wednesday night, and I didn't get halfway through it, but I'm going to back up a little bit, try to finish it this morning. If you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 23. Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 23. My Lord, I feel a spell coming on already. I feel a spell a coming right now. Our preacher's preaching spell a coming this morning. I started this in last this Wednesday night, and I feel like I said I feel something new in the air. I feel a I feel a a shifting that's come to this church, and I'm telling you, I'm believing next year. And I, I mean, and the sister Bonnie, she she come over to that prayer meeting and confirmed this that God's going to do great things around here. There's going to be a river flowing, amen? How many believes that shifting is coming, amen? Amen, I believe you're going to see things God's going to blow your mind away with, amen? Amen, I believe we're going to, this church has faults and spirits, and they're going to go. Did you hear me? The church has faults and spirits. Your household is faults and spirits. Uh, but there's an intrusion that is coming. Um, that intrusion is by Jesus of Nazareth. Did you hear me? Um, we're going to see that this morning. Mark chapter 1 beginning in verse 23. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. Uh, and he cried out saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Uh, are thou Come to destroy us. Uh, I know thee, uh, who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Uh, and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, uh, he came out of him. Uh, and they were all amazed and so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, uh, What thing is this? Uh, what new doctrine is this? For what authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits? And they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Let's go back into verse 24. Saying, let us alone, what have we to do with thee? Jesus, thou Jesus of Nazareth, are thou come to destroy us? Oh, they knew what he come to do. Uh, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One uh, of God. Uh, notice what he, that he unclean spirit said. Uh, let us alone. Uh, that's what I want to go to right there. I want to give you something. This unclean spirit knew exactly what Jesus, who he was. They recognized the authority of Jesus. Um, it recognized who he was and what he had come to do, uh, and it didn't set well with him. Uh, this morning, I want to continue to speak on the thought, uh, let us alone. Um, Heavenly Father, this morning we come before you, dear God, today, Lord, and we lift you up, dear God, uh, Lord, and we praise you, dear God, Lord, and we exalt you, dear God. Uh, oh, Father, today we pray for your anointing. Uh, we pray for your spirit, dear God. Uh, Lord, the fire be turned up, the anointing be turned up, dear God, today, Father. Uh, we bind evil spirits, dear God, that are coming against the church. Uh, we bind the spirit of Jezebel. Uh, we bind the spirit of Korah. Uh, we bind the spirit of Python this morning, oh God. Uh, Lord, we give you glory, God. We give you praise and we give you honor, Lord, today. Uh, and we exalt you in Jesus' name we pray. Uh, amen and amen. Um, I told you Wednesday night, um, there are many spirits that are out uh, trying to attack the body of Christ. Uh, and we begin, I talked a little bit about snakes. Uh, and I talked about how some snakes will, can bite you. Uh, and that snake will literally kill you by its bite. But not all snakes will kill by the bite. How many know there are some snakes that will wrap around you like a boa constrictor or a python, and it will literally begin to squeeze the life out of you. And I begin to tell you that in the spirit. Not all evil spirits and unclean spirits will be kill you with their bite. But some will, there is a spirit. 
spirit called python um, that will literally wrap around you uh, and literally squeeze the very life out of you. Um, it will literally crush you. Um, it will literally squeeze the breath out of you. It is an oppression spirit that, that Satan ha has thrown at many, many times along the way. Um, today I want you to know the body of Christ uh, that we are in a war this morning. Um, I want you to know the body of Christ that we are fighting against these evil spirits today. Uh, these unclean spirits today. Uh, and I want you to know right here in this passage of scripture we begin to see where there was an unclean spirit at. Uh, where was this unclean spirit right here in Mark chapter 1 found at? Uh, it wasn't found in the world. Uh, it was found in the synagogue. Uh, what it told me in today's terms sometimes uh, the devil likes to go to church. Did you hear me? Uh, how many know sometimes the devil likes to sit on pews? Uh, how many know sometimes the devil likes to come into the house of God? Uh, why? But for one purpose to hinder uh, what God is wanting to do. Uh, to hinder uh, the flow of the moving of the Spirit. Uh, to cause dissension. To bring forth sickness. Uh, to hinder revival. To hinder the flow uh, of the Spirit and to stop your influences. Uh, and we begin to see right here in Mark chapter 1 um, where this spirit uh, had was in this man, this unclean spirit was in this man uh, that was inside of the synagogue, uh, that was inside of the house of God if you will. Uh, and I told you Wednesday night, uh, don't be surprised when the, the busy people that are full of the devil sitting on church pews. Uh, well I got news for you. You may be full of the devil and you may want to be filled with the devil, but I want to be filled with the power of Christ this morning. Amen? I want to be filled with the power of Almighty God. Uh, today, you see what began to happen uh, when this spirit came, was in this church. Uh, all of a sudden, there was an intrusion that was made. Uh, all of a sudden, there was an intrusion that took place. Uh, standing before this a man with this unclean spirit uh, was one, uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, and when that unclean spirit recognized him, it began to say, let us alone. It began to get upset. You see what happened right here is that Jesus stepped in that unclean spirit's territory. He intrudes himself. He come to set a man free that day. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is that Jesus is getting ready to do an intrusion in somebody's house this morning. I'm getting ready to tell Houston town that Jesus is getting ready uh, to make an intrusion to the things that we've been fighting around here uh, for a long time for this church has fought even before my tenure has come uh, there is an intrusion that is coming uh, Jesus of Nazareth is coming uh, he is going to step in and he's going to bind those spirits uh, that have come against your house uh, he's going to bind those spirits that have come against the church this morning uh, anybody in here fighting those spirits today uh, you can feel that oppression spirit inside of your life. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about being oppressed? Uh, I'm talking about being weighed down, being bogged down, being battled down. Uh, whether it's sickness, whether it's worry, whether it's stress. Uh, I've come by to tell you uh, that Jesus of Nazareth uh, is standing. It's there to stand in the way this morning. Uh, I've come by to tell you Jesus of Nazareth uh, has come to destroy the works of the devil this morning. Uh, I've come by to tell tell you that Jesus of Nazareth uh, is getting ready to step foot in your household this morning. Uh, I've come by to tell you Jesus of Nazareth uh, is greater than any unclean spirit. Uh, I've come by to tell you that Jesus of Nazareth uh, is greater than any oppression spirit this morning. Uh, I've come by to tell you Jesus of Nazareth uh, is greater than any sickness this morning. Uh, I've come by to tell you Jesus of Nazareth uh, is standing right there and waiting uh, and he's going to cast those devils out this morning. Uh, somebody in here say that Jesus uh, of Nazareth this morning uh, is going to break those spirits that have come against me. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth uh, is going to intrude uh, on what the devil's been doing. Uh, Jesus of Nazareth uh, is going to ruin the devil's plot this morning. Uh, can I hear somebody say uh, Jesus of Nazareth uh, is coming to ruin the devil's plot this morning. My Lord this morning uh, 
I said Jesus of Nazareth is coming to ruin the plot of the enemy. My Lord, this morning, I tell you, sickness has got to go. I'm telling you, depression's got to go. Despair's got to go. Jezebel's got to go. Korah's got to go. By this one, they call Jesus of Nazareth. My Lord, I can dance all over this church. I said, Jesus has got to, I said, the devil's got to go in the name of Jesus. Oh, they're saying, let us alone. I hear that devil now. I hear that unclean spirit. Let us alone. What he was saying is, don't disturb me. Let me alone. Let me have my way. I got to tell you right now, Jesus wasn't going to let him have his way. Did you hear me? I don't know how long he had been in that synagogue. But I know on that day he wouldn't be in that synagogue anymore. I don't know how long that unclean spirit had been in that man. But I, but I can tell you on that day, he would not be in there anymore. Because why? Jesus of Nazareth had made an intrusion. Jesus of Nazareth had stepped in front of him. My Lord, it recognized who he was. You see, it, that unclean spirit recognizes him more than some humans do. Can I tell you, some animals know who he is more than humans do. Did you hear me? They're smarter than some humans because they know who Jesus of Nazareth is today. Did you hear me this morning? It knows who Jesus of Nazareth is. Let me tell you in this day, they ain't but one answer for this country. They ain't but one answer for your household. They ain't but one answer for the church. And it is an intervention from Jesus of Nazareth this morning. I think about the evilness, this unclean spirit sitting in the synagogue. And the Lord said, enough is enough. We're coming there that day. We're going to bind this thing. Oh, that devil didn't like it. Why? Because that devil knew his work was destroyed. Did you hear me? That devil knew that his work was destroyed. That devil didn't welcome Jesus to the synagogue. Did you hear me? Oh, my Lord, it didn't like the fact that Jesus didn't show up, that Jesus showed up there. It didn't like the fact that Jesus had come to where he is at. How many know this morning that when the fire of God begins to crank, the devil's going to rear its ugly head? How many know when the fire of God begins to move, the devil's going to wiggle and it's going to worm a little bit? How many know when the church gets on fire and the full of the Holy Ghost, the devil's going to show it? itself. It's going to wiggle and it's going to worm. But I want you to know the same fire that exposes the devil is the same fire that will destroy the devil. Oh my Lord, don't be surprised when that when you crank the spiritual fire up and you get more serious with God that you begin to see attacks on your household. But let me hang on. Give me just a minute. I'm going to spit them things out one of these days on somebody. My Lord, let me tell you, today, preaching too hard. Listen, let me tell you this morning that Jesus of Nazareth has come to step in this morning. I said Jesus has come to step in to your situation this morning. My Lord, I'm here to tell you, let me tell you, there ain't no power greater than the power of God. Yes, the devil's got power, but his power is not greater than God's. Yes, the witchcraft throws spells and it taps into demons, but it's not power than, more powerful than God. Yes, they are spirits that are sent against the church they are spirits that are set against your household. But let me tell you, they have no power compared to the power of Jehovah God this morning. It wants you to be left alone. My Lord, I'm telling you, I feel that if 2020 is like anything I've been feeling the last couple weeks up here, it's going to be a ride. Did you hear me? We're going to make some devils mad around here. 
Did you hear me? How many is with me want to make some devils mad around here? Let me tell you, I bind these spirits that are coming against your household. I, you got to take authority over them in the name of Jesus this morning. I, did you hear me? You got to take authority over it. Let me tell you, you got to disturb the devil in this day that we're living. People don't want to disturb the devil. Hello? They don't want to disturb the devil. You know what they want to do? They want to walk hand in hand. Oh, if we don't bother you. I believe it was on Jimmy Swagger telegraph. Somebody wrote a letter in saying they knew somebody didn't want to, they didn't want to make the devil mad. If they disturbed the devil, they'd be attacked. I said, well, let me tell you. They said, well, they said you got the wrong attitude. But the people's got that. They don't want to disturb the devil. Did you hear me? They don't want to preach the truth of God's word. You see, when you begin to preach the truth of God's word, you're going to disturb the devil. Hello? How many know when you begin to proclaim the truth of God's word, you're going to disturb the devil? When you upset some people, you're just disturbing the devil this morning. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't want to disturb the devil for Houston Town, you got the wrong preacher this morning because I like to cause a disturbance along the way. I like to cause a ruckus along the way. I like to start a riot along the way. Oh, what are you saying? I like to make them devils so mad. Let me tell you, I like to throw it back at them this morning. Can I tell you, that's exactly what Jesus of Nazareth was doing when he was standing right there in front of the man with the unclean spirit. He was disturbing him. He was disturbing the devil this morning. He was binding that thing. That thing to begin to get so antsy. It began to get so scared. It began to get so upset. It said, let us alone. Leave us alone and let us do what we want to do. But Jesus would not let the devil do what it wanted to do. Too often, we allow him to run rough shot. Did you hear me? Hello? Hello? You can't allow the devil to run rough shot. I've, I've, I've learned my little girl. Don't let nobody learn o run over you. She won't. She won't. She won't. <laughs> she may be doing the running. She knows how to pull it on daddy here. But she won't let nobody run over her. And I won't either. Because if you allow people to run over, you'll allow the devil to run over you. Amen? Let me tell you. You tell somebody something and they don't do it, I believe in going to go tell them, listen, don't you, didn't I tell you not to do it? Whether they want to pout or grout. Amen? 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 Listen, oh my Lord, let me tell you, you're going to disturb the devil. You ain't going to make the devil mad. Let me tell you, if I come in here to try to make you happy, I wouldn't be doing my job. Hello? If I come in here to try to make you please, you wouldn't have a preacher. I come here to disturb the devil. I come here to, to make the devil upset. I come here to show him greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world this morning. I come up here to eradicate darkness today. And let me tell you, but too often the church has not taken the authority over the powers of hell. We back down. 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 Instead of stand up. Hey man, and fight. Let me tell you, God's looking for some Davids this morning. Hello? God's looking for some Davids this morning. David wasn't scared. Oh, my Lord, God told him to do it. He would do it. How many know that? How many know he wasn't scared while all of Israel was backing down and their armies wouldn't face Goliath and the king was a coward in fear? The shepherd boy was there ready to fight. Hey man? My Lord, I feel a charge in the atmosphere this morning. I may jump here in a minute. I'm telling you, I felt this Wednesday night and I felt it this morning. There are spirits that are coming. They're trying to take over. I'm going to hit it tonight. If anybody's ever heard of Cora, how many's ever heard of Cora in here? 
That was the day the earth opened its mouth. Cora wanted to be, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I was going to preach it this morning, but I'm going to wait till the night to preach it because I got, went to this way this morning. Cora was the man who wanted power, wanted authority, and wanted leadership and would go and do what, try to do it any way it wanted to do it. It almost got ties with Jezebel, if you will. It's interesting. These people that are seeking the power and the authority always die a horrific death. Jezebel died by the dogs. And Korah died when the mouth of the earth opened up and swallowed him whole. He got those around Korah with the mouth and there was 250 others that was, sl that was slain by fire at the end of it. But there are spirits of Korah and Jezebel that won't control and don't want to listen. Korah wanted to be the priest when God had appointed Moses and Aaron over that. That's what Korah wanted. What they were doing, what the Lord showed me, it wasn't just an attack on Moses and Aaron. It was a very attack on the authority of God. And they were picking a attack. They were picking a fight with God. And God said, I had enough of them. He opened the mouth of the earth and swallowed them whole. And they, you know, they died and went into hell. <laughs> that's exactly what happened to them at that day. But anyway, there ain't, there's just that spirit that's coming. How the Lord showed me there's things that are wrapping around people, that are oppressing people, that are, tell, that are bringing them down. There's that python that is an oppression spirit that is trying to squeeze the very life out of you. But God said you got authority over those things if you're a child of his in this morning. God said you got power over those things this morning. Let me tell you the day that God has given us power over the powers of hell this morning. Did you hear me? Let me tell you when we begin through the name of Jesus. How many know there's power in the name of Jesus this morning? Let me tell you the devils tremble and mention at the name of Jesus. In James 2 and 19, the Bible says, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. I told you years ago, some of you may not have heard this, when I was in the parsonage down in Robbinsville, my eyes were awoken to a vision. Right before my bed was the most evil, hideous creature I had ever seen, dressed in black and all I could see, and it was bigger than me. It had almost a great, but it wanted to kill me that night. I said, I, my eyes were wide awake. This is the, one of the only few times I've had visions like this. I don't have them every day. I don't have them every week, but I do have them sometimes. And this is one of the times when I was wide awake in the middle of the night, it's in the bed, in the bedroom down in the trailer at the church. Right before that bed was that creature wanting to destroy me. It was wanting to kill me that night. And God, the Holy Ghost said, just say Jesus. And as I was saying Jesus, there come a flash of lightning from the east to the west. And I watched that thing flee. In his name, I watched that thing tremble. And this is what I don't tell many. Before my bed that night, I also saw three men about eight, nine feet tall, I'd say. Biggest men I've ever seen before me laying or sitting inside my bed. I believe they didn't have wings. Let me just go ahead and tell you that. They were dressed in white and they had swords. They were on a warfare. Did you hear me? Listen what I'm telling you. I seen that night that there's power in the name of Jesus. I believe that's what God was teaching me. There's power in the name of Jesus. I said there's power in the name of Jesus. My Lord, how many know that there's power in that name this morning? So you begin to see that power in his name. In Luke 8 and 28, it don't matter if there's one, if there's legions of them. It still trembles at his name. It still falls on their face at his name. Luke 8 and 28, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice, what 
have I to do with thee? Jesus, thou Son of God most high, I beseech thy, thee, torment me not. Let me tell you this morning that, that man was bound with legion of demons. And them legion of demons knew exactly who Jesus was. They knew who Jesus was. Did you hear me? It knew who he had. They said, let us go into the pigs. This is where some pigs has got more sense than some humans. Hello? There's some people's got the heart head of a donkey. Did I just say that? <laughs> A donkey's got more sense to them. But these pigs had more sense. Jesus said, go in them pigs. How many know what them pigs did? They went and ran off the cliff. They'd rather die than live with demons in them. And, but we got people today that some of them. Let me go ahead and give you a nugget. Walmart and Amazon. You can go in Walmart and find a book for children about summons and demons now. It's coming on the shelves. It may be already be there. Walmart. How to summon demons. Yeah. Geared to kids. Geared to your children and grandchildren. How to summon demons. That's not a joke, folks. This is where we're at. Let me tell you, they want to fill these kids with the power of the devil. Let me tell you something. They want power. They need to get filled with the power of God. Hey man, hey man, it ain't, it's a scary thing to play around with the devil. Hello, how many know that? This is where we're at. But let me tell you, there's one thing that can eradicate this darkness, and that is to preach Jesus. There's one thing that are coming against the church tonight that can eradicate these spirits is to declare the name Jesus. When you begin to preach Jesus and declare, thus said the Lord, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be a breakthrough. The light is going to shine in darkness. Listen, let me tell you today, the church has stood back for too long and allowed these things to take control. Can I tell you this morning, and as the pastor, I'm here to stand up, and I'm here to take authority over these things in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. They got to flee. Let me tell you, you households, let me tell you in the name of Jesus, you got to take authority over your household. How did Jesus, he took authority. He overcome the devil when he was tempted in the wilderness. How many know he overcome the devil by what? The word of God. Oh, my Lord, this morning, my Lord, I feel like I'm preaching all morning. I'm here in Mark 1 and 26, I, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, I mean, he opened his mouth, hold your peace and come out of him. You know what the de Jesus was telling the devil? In other words, he was saying, shut up! That's what Jesus was telling this unclean spirit here. To shut up! Too often we allow the devil to talk. Anybody ever been around? That just nagged and nagged and nagged and nagged. Dang. You'd want a nickname on Jaws. I had it. <laughs> I, I'll tell on my great aunt, I won't mention her name. She had a nickname as the Mouth of the South. <laughs> she did. You got around her. Just want to tell them, just, just shut up. <laughs> let me get a word. <laughs> Jesus wouldn't even let this thing talk. Jesus said, shut up. That's what Jesus, when he rebuked him, that's what Jesus was telling the unclean spirit. Shut up. Shut up. You ain't got no authority to say anything else. You ain't got no authority. You're going to listen to me. What was Jesus doing when he was telling this unclean spirit to shut up? He was taking authority over it. You see, I'm telling you, those things like to talk. Those things like to tell you things. 
Those things like to put things in your mind. Did you hear me? How many know what I'm talking about? These evil things that come your way. I'm not saying you're possessed. There's some that is possessed in this world, but there's no true born-again believer can be possessed. You're bought with the blood. How do you know that? Because Jesus said a devil cannot cast out a devil. A house divided will fall. But a believer can, a born-again believer can be oppressed by the devil. Things like the talk. It likes to run its mouth, but Jesus said, you ain't saying that. I'm taking authority over it. You're going to listen to me, and you're going to do what I told you to do. You're going to do exactly what I'm telling you to do. That's what, exactly what Jesus was doing. He was taking authority over it. See, the next time that devil travels your way with that negativity, you need to take authority over it. Amen. When the devil says you're going down, you need to say, I'm going up. Amen. When the devil tells you everything's falling apart, you say, God's going to turn it around. Amen. How many know what I preach Sunday night? God's going to turn it around. Amen. You need to hear that if you didn't hear it. Let me tell you here today, let me tell you what I'm coming by to tell you that God has, he has given us the power of the same authority over these things. You know what he has given the church? Those who are saved, washed in the blood, he's given them power of attorney to use his name. There are certain people that if I need something done in this church, I can give the authority to, to use my name. I mean, like if we write a check in here, my name's got to be, as the pastor, my name's got to be on the check because what's my name represent the authority the authority if I tell you not to do something I'm telling you with my authority not to do it you hear me I'll just go ahead and tell you what I'm getting ready to start now I'm getting ready to establish altar workers I'm going to get the ones that I trust and I'm going to get mama to lead it up Everybody listen to me. Where I don't have to explain twice, where I don't have to set you down. She's going to be in charge of altar workers. Unless her or me, ask, she's going to ask some people. She don't ask you. If I don't ask you, her to tell her to do it, you don't need to come up there. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost told me to do it, unless I need you to do it. Now, like that. It's called taking authority. If you ain't asked, don't do it. I'm giving you what God gave me. When I tell you no snacks in here, next time I catch some, I'm going to take them and throw them in the trash. And I've been tempted. I know sometimes you got emergencies, and I have no problem with that. But when I see people playing on Facebook on the phones, I'm about tempted sometimes. It takes the restraining. Maybe he'll let me loose one day to grab your phone and just throw it as far as I can throw it through the road. I'm not trying to be mean. If you got an emergency, that's one thing. But there's a difference in an adult playing on Facebook. Hello. I'm tired. I told you. I'm tired of the devil running roughshod around here. It's time to put some order down. It's time to take authority. Amen. Amen. And I'll tell you right now, if it's got a chip on your shoulder, let me know. I'm ready to come and knock it off of it. I, got, I feel that kind of anointing this morning. <laughs> I know one preacher. I know one preacher. Somebody was walking out in his service when he was preaching one time. Little boy. He wasn't, he wasn't too much bigger than me. Jonathan Ziegler. They went out of his service and big old guys. He went, God, he said, hang on. He went and got them, pulled them back in from outside and said, God ain't doing you. He's talking to you right now. He was the anointing. Listen, I'm tired of the devil running rush hot. I'm tired of the devil running rush shot. I think some of you allowed the devil to run rush shot over your life. I think I'm going to jump here in a minute. 
I'll tell you, I feel something new in me. Woo! I feel a charge in me like I ain't felt in a long time. Some of you may not like it. <laughs> this may be all afternoon. <laughs> but we've allowed the de devil to run rough shot instead of taking authority over him. Listen, I tell you this morning, God's, we, God's give us the authority to do it. But too often, we don't want to take the authority. We want to back down. I've come to take the authority this morning. I've come to tell you you're free this morning. My Lord, I tell you, I think something was broke on me. There was an I'm telling you, I feel a new ch charge in me. I feel a new charge. I feel better than I've ever felt. That may be good. It'd be good for me, but you, some of you may not like it. You got to take authority over those things in the name of Jesus. Because I got the authority. He's given me the authority. He's given me the authority. Somebody said, who give you the right to do what you do around here? First of all, God's given me the right, as long as it lines up with Scripture. Second of all, the Church of God of Cleveland, Tennessee, has given me a right. Hello? Hello? Does everything got to come through the preacher? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Let's get that right. Get that in the clear. Anything that goes along around here. Anything you want to do for the Lord, if I, if I don't think you need to be doing it, I'm going to tell you no. If you don't like it, well, how do I put this nicely? You can get over it, or you can get a thumb up, or you can hitchhike down the road. I'm not trying to be mean, but there's too many in these last days. There's too many spirits that are trying to take over. And let me tell you, if it's in your household, oh, I'm going to get something. Can I preach a little while this morning? I'm going to be gone in about two weeks anyway. Let me tell you some of you men something. There's some men, husbands, that need to get their wife under control. The God Christ has told the body, oh, I'm on to something. Christ told the man he was the head in the Lord. Subjection. Now, I'm not talking about if somebody ain't saved. I'm talking they're the Lord. You're saved. The man's the head. Amen. Amen. I've seen it too many times where the woman rules the roost. And I'm thinking, all you got to do is put your foot down. So I ain't taking it. I'm talking about in godly. I'm talking about in a godly way. Amen. There's a difference in a godly way and an ungodly way. Let's understand that. Amen. Let's understand that. What it is, is an Ahab and Jezebel spirit. You'll hear me deal more with this after the first of the year. But they're spirits. You'll hear me probably deal more with Python because I'm really studying that right now. Because I really think it's squeezing the life out of some. And God wants you to take authority over it. He's give you power today. Some of these things don't come out by prayer alone, but by prayer and fasting. What are you saying, preacher? I'm telling you, I just mentioned a few of them this morning, the most familiar ones. And there's the spirit of Michael that wants to steal your worship, that despise your worship. I could go on and I can go on and I can go on. But I'm telling you this morning, Christ has given us the authority over these things in the name of Jesus. First of all, in Mark 16 and 17, And these signs shall follow them who believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. Notice that in his name they shall cast out what? Devils. Luke 10 and 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall hurt by any means shall hurt you. 
This is right here. Luke 10 and 19 is the reason I can walk around like Barney Fife. How many like Barney in here? We had more law men like him and Roscoe Pico train. We'll be all right. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. I had to get a little humor, but I like Barney. He was my favorite. Historian Roland Bacon quoted one method Luther used in taking authority over the devil. Devil. He said, Luther said, when I go to bed, he said, the devil's always there waiting for me. When he begins to plague me, I give him the answer. Devil, I must sleep. That's God's command, work by day and sleep by night. So go away. Listen, that's what he did. You see, as believers this morning, we've been given a right to take authority. We've been given a right to take authority in the name of Jesus. Uh, did you hear me this morning? I said you've been given authority to take a, a authority over those demons uh, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to demonstrate something right here. If you get cold, just give me just a minute. You need to tell the devil to get out of your house. Did you hear me this morning? I said, you need to tell the devil to get out of your house. Did you hear me this morning? I said, you need to open the door. Tell the devil to get out of your house this morning. Did you hear me? You need to tell the devil to get out of your church this morning. Lord, I, there's more doors to open. I'd open some more. Oh, what I'm telling you is you got to take authority this morning. You got to mean business. Anybody ever had to run somebody off before? You didn't. You weren't nice with them, was you? I remember years ago, a salesman come. Now they still come by here, trying to sell stuff I don't want. Then they get pushy. Then you just got to tell them, "Listen, I ain't buying it, and you need to leave." People, anybody, if you ever had to run anybody out of your house, you know what I'm talking about. You ain't playing with them. You're meaning business with them. See, I'm telling you, God wants you to run the devil out of your house this morning. Amen. I said, God wants you to take authority over the devil and say, you ain't got a right to reside here because this house is bought with the blood of Jesus Christ this morning. The only one that's welcome in this house is God this morning. This house is protected by the blood of Jesus this morning. You need to remind the devil that the blood is greater than him. You need to remind the devil that he's defeated. You need to remind him that he's got to flee in the name of Jesus. Too many are letting the devil take their rough shot over them. And listen, God never intended for that. God wants you to take authority of it. Amen? Listen, we've been given that authority in the name of Jesus. I want you to know there are spirits before I got here that had come against the church and we can still face these. We're still bad on these spirits now. Shouldn't be. There's got to be victory. Did you hear me? They have no right here. There's things that you've been fighting over in your household for years. Hey, anybody know what I'm talking about? They got to go in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Let me give you a little nugget here. I know I'm, I'm a little bit off course, but I want to tell you, some of you need to go through and see what's in your house. What kind of objects or things that you got in your house and look at these symbols and get rid of these things. Did you hear me? Hey, man, I'm not going to put a so-called peace symbol in my house. There's other things I'm not going to put in my house either. Let me just tell you about the peace symbol real quick, if you don't know, because a lot of people don't know what that symbol, what that peace symbol is, is an upside-down cross. That's what it is. And what they come up with the thought was that the power of the cross was broken. They're trying to make it with peace now. That's what it comes down to. There's other symbols I'm not going to, there's things I'm not going to put allow come into my house i'm not going to bring harry potter into my house i'm not going to bring some of these other things into my house because knowing where they come from there's certain music i'm not going to turn on there's certain things i'm not going to put on the tv there's certain things i'm not going to look at on youtube there's certain things i'm not going to place there see i'm going to tell you some of you need to have an inventory of your house there's people probably got things in there that's bringing forth idols and things like that maybe you don't even realize it horoscopes the ouija boards tarot cards and things like that that are opening the door for things like 
like that. My Lord, we got to do a house inventory out. We got to do a cleansing out. There needs to be a purging. And I'm going to probably get into that sometimes next year. Houses that need to be purged. I'm preaching. I know I'm getting ready to close it out here in a few minutes. But I'm trying to tell you this morning that Satan has run rough shot in his house. He has run rough shot in Jesus and saying, take authority. Take control. Get it under control. Get him out in the name of Jesus. Get that spirit out. You can use my name. You can use my authority. You see, it's like using his name. Let me give you in the natural. Patty's got a right to use my name on certain things. If I give her permission to do, but her being the clerk, her being the clerk, she's number two behind me. She can call and say, Pastor Jimmy said to do this. Pastor Jimmy said to do that. Hello. She's got a right to use my name. No, not everybody in here has got a right to use my name. If I find out somebody's using my name without authority, we're going to have a go to G- without my permission. We're going to have a go to beat Jesus beating personally. You may meet him beforehand. <laughs> Be like going up here charging something without me knowing it. It's called fraud. It is. Amen. The sons of Scabia used Jesus' name by fraud. They didn't have permission to use his name. But that's what Jesus is saying. You got, he's saying, you got my permission to use my name because you're my child. Hello? Now, everybody's got, listen, that's what Jesus was talking about. What did Jesus do right here? Jesus cast this unclean spirit out. Mark 1 and 26, and when the unclean spirit had torn him, and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. Again, this thing had to obey him. It had to obey the Lord in every aspect. This unclean spirit tore him, but we know it did not hurt him. When it tore him, how do we know that? Because Luke records this same account. And Luke 4 and 35, listen to what Luke says right here. Luke's account of it. And Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And the devil had thrown him in the midst. He came out of him and hurt him not. That was Luke's account. Said it throwed him. That's the same thing as tearing him, if you will. Throwed him around. The thought is, here's the thought what many scholars believe what happened here. That this unclean spirit was so overcome with fear that he hastened to remove himself from this man with so much speed that it caused convulsions in him. Listen, I've seen spirits come out by people throwing up before. Convulsions and things. I've seen people's eyes turn red. Listen, I, you may think I'm crazy, but I've watched them levitate off the ground before. It wasn't no magician's trick or cheap, something like that. It was real. They would literally levitate as that thing was coming out of them. My Lord, but Jesus, give us authority over it. Did you hear me this morning? Let me tell you, somebody can go get Marcy. You don't mind. The thought is, this morning, we can take authority over the spirit of fear. There is a spirit of fear that runs rampant. See, I'm not dealing with one. There's some I'm really going to deal with after the first of the year. There's a spirit of fear. We can take authority over those things this morning. There's the spirit of Jezebel. Let me tell you how you get a hold of somebody that's bossy and wants to tell you what to do. You stand up to them. Hello? You stand up to them. That don't work. Refer them to me. How to work. (laughs) How to work. There's a spirit of lust. Never before have I seen so many people living together outside of marriage. Never before have I seen the spirit of homosexuality run rampant like it is right now. I heard it's in Badener school systems, even here in Fulton County. Men dressing like 
women and women dressing like men. It's a spirit of lust. It's a spirit of stupidity too. It's the spirit of lust that goes around with adultery, homosexuality, bisexuality. Try, whatever you want to get to, it's coming. They'll be wanting want for long. They'll be wanting to marry the horses. You watch it. This is how so perverse America's come. You let me tell you where America is going. They're what there's a legalized push to do to say child, put child molesters. It's all right. I'm telling you, there's a legalized for kids adult relationship. There's a push for it coming. It's a spirit of lust. Amen. If you're not happy with your mate, go find somebody else. Oh, let me go fling around a little bit. Let me go fling around a little bit. No, 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 no. That is a spirit of lust. That's what it is. Not only is there a spirit of lust, there is, here's a big one. And I tell you, there is a spirit of sleep and slumber that has hit the churches. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about natural sleep. I'm talking about spiritual sleep. There's a spirit of sleep that has hit the church. Even I believe Paul addressed it in Romans, if I'm not mistaken, about the spirit of sleep where people are sleeping. It is a spirit where people are not on fire like they need to be. These spirits are set to attack. There's a spirit of python that literally wraps his, arm, wraps his body around you trying to squeeze life out of you. Trying to take the last breath out of you. It's an oppression. But I've come by to tell you this morning, the church must take authority over these things in the name of Jesus. The church must take authority over these things in the name of Jesus. That the church must take authority. Let me tell you, you must take authority over these things in your household. Did you hear me? You must take authority over these things in your household. You must take authority over these things in your household. You can't wait on nobody else. You've got to do it. If I waited on somebody else, I'd be waiting a long time. I'd be sick. If I had to wait on somebody else to take authority over things, you know what I'd be? I'd be a skeleton sitting in a closet and still waiting. How many know that? God's telling me to tell the church, you got the right. You got the authority. But you got to evoke that authority. Don't let the enemy have his way over you this morning. Let the enemy know that he has no authority. Take control of it. Make it flee. In the name of Jesus, let me tell you, I'm praying God, and I believe God's going to let me turn up the heat around here in the coming year. Some may like it, some may not like it. I'm just going to flow. I'm just going to flow. But I plan on turning the heat up. <laughs> hey, some devil's in trouble. No, the church needs to turn the heat up too. You need to turn the heat up in your house. You need to turn, I'm, I don't think I'm talking about this in a natural sense because I'm not, because I love air conditioning in the natural. I love cold in the natural. But in the spiritual, we can't have the cold. We can't have the air conditioning on. The heat must be cranking and it must be constantly turned up. The spiritual heat. You can stand it here this morning. God said, the Lord said, and listen to what they said in Luke 4 and 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this, with for what authority and power he commanded the unclean spirit, and they come out. Guess what? He gave the church the same authority and power as well. This morning, I'm going to tell you right now, you're fighting these spirits. You're fighting these spirits in your household. Jesus said, take authority over them. He said, I give you power. I give you power to tread over serpents and scorpions. If you got to write Luke 10 and 19 down and paste it on your refrigerator and place it everywhere you go, write it down. How many would say, preacher, I'm fighting a battle. 
in my house. I'm fighting these spirits that are coming against me this morning. They got to go. They got to go. They got to go. In the name of Jesus. They got to flee. In the name of Jesus. Sister Marcy, they got to go in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We take authority. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen.